Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. So recently I've been discussing some topics and one of them was if the RDNA 3 cards would effectively be on MCM, so multi-chip module or chiplet, and now it is confirmed on video cards. So AMD, RDNA and CDNA, graphics, roadmap and build, RDNA 3 has over 50% better performance per watt, RDNA 4 by 2024, and also it is confirmed to have chiplet design, so multi-chip module. So we, it's basically like multi-GPU, but slightly different, okay? And we also have some more interesting data. So let's go into it. Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco, and welcome to my channel. AMD RDNA 3 confirmed with 5 nanometers process and chiplet design. At Financial Analyst Day 2022, David Wang, Senior Vice President Engineer at Radium Technologies Group, confirmed the roadmap for the next generation RDNA and CDNA products. AMD RDNA 3 confirmed with chiplet design. <coughs> AMD RDNA 3 architecture will offer over 50% better performance per watt over RDNA 2, which the company already declares as more efficient than NVIDIA consumer and peer GPUs architecture by comparing the RX 6950 XT to the 3090 Ti. Now, if we talk a bit about performance per watt, uh, AMD has clearly the, the upper hand here. For example, if you look at the 6600 versus the 3060, you can see the 3060 easily pulling around 170 watts while the 6600 XT will rarely, and I repeat, rarely go to 160 watts while performing equally or in most cases even better, okay? So more the same or more performance at lower power draw. And the same applies, for example, to the 6700 XT. It's more or less the same, less power draw at similar or higher performance. So it is indeed more efficient and going from RDNA 2 to RD, uh, to, from RDNA 1, sorry, to RDNA 2, the performance increase in terms of, the increase in performance per watt, sorry, was quite considerable. If, if we go, for example, uh, from the 5700 XT to the 6800, I can have both cards consuming the same power, so around 220 watts, while the 6800 is incredibly faster than the 5700 XT, so way, way faster than the 5700 XT exactly at the same power draw. So that's a major update. And if we actually manage to have something like that with RDNA 3, things will be amazing. So according to previous leaks, we're looking at things like having a, a 7700 XT performing the same as the 6950 XT, but having the lower power draw. Imagine having a, a card as powerful as the 6950 XT, but in a um, 180 power draw, 180 watts power draw. Yes, that, that would be amazing. So way better performance at lower power draw, okay? Furthermore, AMD confirmed rumors that the next-gen gaming architecture will indeed be the company's first to feature advanced chiplet packaging. Great. The new architecture will see re-architectured computer units, re-architectured compute units, and a new optimized graphics pipeline, this I know. So they also improved the pipelines going to RDNA. It was not a major improvement, but it was quite a big improvement. And going from RDNA to RDNA 2, they improved a lot. And now it seems that we also have an optimized graphics pipeline and we have uh, re-architectured computer units, whatever. <laughs> AMD RDNA 3 will launch with Navi 3X GPUs later this year. It isn't clear if the graphics card shown in the official slide is an indication of the similar RX 7000 series color design to the existing RDNA 2 RX 6000 series. So we have here, indeed, um, we have a presentation that was sent by AMD, a slide from AMD, I suppose. AMD RDNA 3, the journey continues with over 50% performance per watt uplift, which was what they actually told about the RDNA 2 versus the RDNA 1. And it it wasn't it wasn't indeed a lie, it was 
it was almost like that it was very very good actually so yes we go from seven nanometers to five nanometers tsmc we have advanced chiplet packaging re-architectured compute units optimized graphics pipeline and next gen amd infinity cache so from what we know previously we actually have way more infinity cache at least in some models we have double the infinity cache and cache makes a huge play in most scenarios we have five nanometers instead of seven nanometers so higher density and lower power draw for the same transistors um we have chiplet design basically we have it's the same as the Ryzen CPUs, okay? It's exactly the same as the Ryzen CPUs. So Ryzen CPUs uh, also work in chiplet design, okay? They have the input output on one side and they have the core package in one side and other core package in another and they work via Infinity Fabric. And I suppose that the chiplet packaging will work the same way. We'll have cores here, cores there, and then the Infinity Fabric connecting them. Now, is it really worth because we're adding more latency I think it is really worth because like like they did with Ryzen, they have more latency, but they actually managed to get more uh, more things on the other side. So they managed more IPC, they managed lower power draw and all because of this chiplet design. So I think that RDNA 3 is indeed in the right way. We actually have some news on the RDNA 4 uh, and the news are basically that it will be released supposedly in 2024. Without providing many details, AMD confirmed that RDNA4 architecture will use more advanced node, maybe 3 nanometers, I suppose. AMD is not mentioning the process node for the RDNA4 GPUs, probably to obfuscate the details on purpose. The architecture should be introduced by 2024, which is a similar timeline to Zen 5 CPU architecture. So for 2022, we, we will actually have the Zen 3. Uh, the Zen 4 CPUs, sorry, the Zen 4 CPUs, so the Ryzen 7000 in the end of the year, and the same applies to RDNA 4. So the, the, um, the RDNA 3, Jesus. And the same applies to RDNA 3, okay? Uh, both by the end of the year. I think that the, um, the CPUs will be released first, like September or something else, and the RDNA 3 GPUs will be released by the end of the year, okay? So yes, we also have the CDNA architecture, which is the CPU chiplets. Now, this is interesting, let me see. Oh, this is for the... Mm, CDNA is basically the professional, the professional part of the, of the AMD card, so it's my bad, completely my bad, sorry. But on the professional side, if we actually have this five times the performance per watt, it will be an amazing and an astonishing improvement for people actually trying to use AMD cards on the professional side. So it will be amazing. Most people still use the Nvidia cards because they have the CUDA cores. Most software uses the CUDA cores and they are way more efficient. Now, if we can actually manage to have five times the performance per watt, then I can see finally more and more users on the professional side actually buying AMD cards. That's, that's very nice. So as you saw, the RDNA 3 graphics seem better and better as the time passes by. And I was, I was having some discussions that people once again told me that it wouldn't be chiplet design, it wouldn't be MCM, it was yet to be confirmed and now it is confirmed, okay? It is indeed chiplet design, but Although, although it is really, really interesting to have uh, this data, we have no actual performance, performance data, so we will have to wait, but I suppose it will be very, very good. Now, on another news, we have the Radeon RX, not the RX, that's the interesting point. We have the Radeon 6700 Pulse on the wild. So just a week after Sapphire's introduction of the Radeon 6700 XT, 6700, this new graphics card is already available through retailers. Megasize GPU posted an actual photograph of the RX, not the RX, Jesus, of the Radeon 6700 Pulse. This is the new Navi 22 based model that features no RX or XT monikers, uh, technically being the first uh, in the RDNA 2 desktop series to do so. Now, we have some images here, so uh, Sapphire, Radeon 6700. I really don't understand what AMD is doing here. Maybe this is just OEM sided, but if it was just OEM sided, then Sapphire wouldn't actually be selling it. And there isn't the RX 
it isn't RX 6700, uh, it is just Radeon 6700. What's the purpose of this? I really want to know because it makes no sense. So we have RDNA 2 cards completely, completely uh, following the same name, the same name tactic. So XT, non XT, but they all are RX cards. Even the RX 6500 XT, even the RX 6400, all are RX cards. And although the new 6700 is not RX, it is just 6700. Why? What made AMD actually do this? It makes no sense because the architecture is exactly the same. I mean, it's still RDNA2 architecture. Um, the only difference is that it has a, an odd buzz. So we usually have something like 128 bit buzz, 192, then we go to um, 256, 384 and so on. Um, and we usually don't have 10 gigabytes. I think that it is, it is actually the first AMD card with 10 gigabytes memory and an unusual buzz width of 160. Okay, I never saw a card on the AMD side with 160 bit buzz and 10 gigabytes VRAM. And it is indeed the first one. Maybe that's why they are they are actually they are actually putting it as a non-RX card, but it it still makes no sense because it is indeed an RX 6000 series card. RDNA 2, uh, so as you can see, Navi 22, 7 nanometers, so exactly the same. Um, I mean, it's exactly the same apart from the 10 gigabytes VRAM and the 160 bit bus. Okay, it has also less, a bit less cores and so on, but overall, it is basically the same. So it is in between the 6650 XT and the 6700 XT. It is there in between in terms of stream processors and other things like uh, compute units. I think that the, 50, the 6700 XT has 40 compute units and this one has something like 36. 36, sorry. Um, we have 10 gigabytes of VRAM with 160 bit buzz. And we have, but but although we have the same infinity cache, so we have the same infinity cache of the 6700 XT from what I've read so far, uh, but we have less, bi uh, we have less bit buzz and we have less VRAM and less stream processor. So I think that it will be considerably faster than the 6650 XT. Uh, while being just a bit slower than the 6700 XT. Now it all comes to pricing, because if they indeed manage to get it just a bit more expensive than the 6650 XT, then it will sell. If not, people will just go to the 6700 XT, I suppose. It, for me, it makes no sense. Now we have the 4060 consuming 220 watts, and where does this stop? The next generation, the 5060, will consume 300 watts for the 5060. It makes no sense. AM AMD is kind of focusing on the performance per watt and Nvidia is losing that battle miserably, okay? They were already losing on the NPR architecture, but now if this, if this is actually true, they will be losing by a lot. So they may be more powerful or a bit more powerful, but they will be definitely consuming more power and most people don't want that. Even more, um, it, it is just not because of the, the power draw per se or the, the bill in the end of the month or in the end of the year. It's just that more power will usually uh, put more heat on the GPU. It will consume more power, so it will heat up more uh, and it will need a bigger cooler, a more expensive cooler, and so on, so on, so on, okay? The overclocking ability may not be that much because at stock it will already heat up more, so it has lots of factors alongside the power draw and not just the power draw itself. According to Copilot 7 Kimi, the next generation, the next generation RTX 4060 graphics card is reportedly launching with higher TDP than the RTX 3070. The RTX 3070 is based on a cut-down GA104 GPU with TDP limited to 220 watts. This means that the RTX 4060 would ship with even higher TDP. So basically, having a 4060 that has higher TDP than the 3070, it would have to perform at least at the 3080 levels. This is me uh, saying, because it wouldn't make sense having 
more or higher TDP than the 3070 while performing the same as the 3070, okay? So I suppose it will have a bit higher TDP, but also uh, more performance like on the 3080 or maybe 3080 Ti level, okay? That would be nice. Uh, here's the, the Twitter, the Twitter post. So take this with a grain of salt because we, we don't have actual, actual proof of this. It is just a guy on Twitter saying it. Uh, but some guys actually have some inside information, so that's why this leads to rumors. Uh, I don't care about the real release date, I'm just curious about the performance of the RTX 4060, which consumes more power than the 3070, okay? NVIDIA has been progressively increasing TDP for its GeForce uh, 70 and 60 series over each generation. So this new generation wouldn't be surprising news, yet one might wonder if GeForce performance segments even mean anything as new SKUs are added with an increased power and oft oftentimes higher price. So yeah, NVIDIA needs something more to actually to actually bind the... the um, the buyers to their products, at least in the next generation, because if this is true, having, I mean, 220 watts, like I told you, from the, the 960, it was always rising, so they actually decreased from the 760 to the 960, then it maintained to 120, then 160, then 170, like I told you, and now 220. It's getting rough for NVIDIA, and the NVIDIA does have to increase the price or the performance Per, per watt at least if they want to compete with AMD in the next generation or they need to have really a really astonishing performance even more on ray tracing if they do increase that so astonishing performance on ray tracing and overall performance people won't mind much about the, um, the actual power draw but they if they don't have something significant significantly faster than the AMD counterparts even more on ray tracing I see the, the NVIDIA market share actually decreasing a lot. If they manage it, maybe they will rise it a bit, or at least they will maintain it. But I see RDNA 3 graphics as an absolute win, and if the rumors are true, they will be insane in terms of ray tracing and rasterization performance. So, very nice. So guys, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share this video because that really helps a lot. This was just a video with three news, uh, three recent news about the RDNA 3, CDNA, uh, the 4060, RTX 4060, and the Radeon 6700. My my tongue was already going to RX. I had to, I had to slash it down a bit because it, I'm so used to saying RX 6700. I mean, it makes no sense going just to Radeon 6700. Anyway, anyway, AMD. See you in the next video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.